at least in my experience, limited as it may be. All right, I will begin with a word of prayer. Ahem. Ahem. Dear Father, we uh, thank you for this day. I thank you for these students. Just ask you to bless our work today, Lord. In name I pray. Amen. All right, so dual space. Let us talk about the dual space. I will try not to talk about this too long because it's not a um, super big topic in here, but here's what it is. Given V over F, we define the dual to V, a V upper star, to be linear transformations from V to F. So the dual space is the set of linear functionals um, from, from a given vector space to the field. So, um, for example, if, um, yeah. What do we mean when we say functions? We mean functions. linear functions from V to F. So if v, um, if v is equal to Rn, then alpha is in the v is in v dual, um, defined by alpha of v equals to say v dot w. This defines a alpha, that makes alpha a dual vector. You could just um, you could even you could say alpha sub w if you want. So like alpha sub w is the dual vector which corresponds to w. You give the formula for alpha sub w just by v dot w. The fact that this is linear follows from the properties of the dot product, right? Dot product is linear. So that's an example. Um, another example, if v is equal to say rn by n, then the trace is in the dual, right? Where trace of a trace of a is a one one plus a two two plus a n n. This defines a dual vector because that's a linear function from n by n matrices to the real numbers, right? Another example, if we had functions, continuous functions on the closed interval 0 to 1, then you could say alpha of f equal to the integral from a to b of f of x dx. This would define a dual vector. Alpha would be a dual vector to the continuous functions on 0 to 1 because the integral is linear. And the definite integral from a to b, oh, I meant 0. I said 0, 1 here. I should probably put 0, 1 over here. Sorry about that. So some examples of dual vectors. I will, I will remo remove the disturbing faceless kernel from the board. Very good. Thank you, guys. I think there's room for it here, though. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so um, dual basis. Let beta v1, v2, da 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 vn be basis for v over f, then beta star equal to v upper 1 the upper two, da, 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 the upper n is a basis for v dual. Now, this of course, I mean, you're like, what? What are you talking about? V upper one, v upper two. You know, is that like v squared? I mean, what is that? No, th this is a label. And so let me, let me, be more specific here, where. We define v upper i acting on v lower j to be Kronecker delta i j, then extend linearly. So 
So this is the, the so-called so-called dual basis. Let me let me give you an example of this before I do much more. So R3, right, is the span of E1, E2, E3, right? So if I look at E upper 1, E upper 1 acting on a vector, let's say AE1 plus BE2 plus CE3, how's that work? So E upper 1 is by definition a linear transformation on R3. So I can pull out A, B, C, I can break up across addition. By construction, it's a linear transformation. So I've got like A, E1, E1, plus B, E1, E2, plus C, E1, E3. Right? And then, by definition, right, E upper 1 acting on E lower J is only, is only non-zero if J is equal to 1. So by construction, this is 1, this is 0, and this is 0. Right? So E upper 1 acting on the vector ABC, right? Is actually just equal to A. And going back to my other example, alpha sub W, right? You know, what about alpha sub W? Alpha sub W, let's say um, alpha sub W of X equals to X dot W, right? Let W equal to W1, W2, W3, right? Then what do you what are you looking at here? Um, well, my claim is that we can write alpha sub w as equal to like w1 e upper 1 plus w2 e upper 2 plus w sub 3 e upper 3. Like I, I can build the dual vector alpha sub w as the linear combination of this, these dual bases. And so like if you calculate alpha sub w acting on x, you're going to get w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus W3, X3 by a calculation very similar to the one I wrote in purple and red right above. Because when, when, when E1 hits X, it just picks off X1. And when E2 hits X, it just picks off X2. And when E3 pick, hits X, it just picks off X3. And of course, that's the dot product of W and X, right? Which I told you was the definition of alpha sub W. Since that holds for all X, that means that alpha sub W is indeed as claimed. It's it's built from W1, E1, plus W2, E2, plus W3, E3. So it's a kind of weird new notation, right? This, this upper subscripts, but let me just fundamental proposition, right? If um, X is equal to, let's say, C1, V1, plus C2, V2, plus da da da, plus C, N, V, N, you know, where beta is, you know, basis. With dual basis beta star, as we've been discussing. Where basis beta is this, with dual basis beta star. All right. Um, then C, uh, C sub J, all right, is nothing more than V upper J acting on X.
Uh, okay, so the proof here, how do we prove it? Really, relatively simple. Um, let Vj act on x, right? That's Vj acting on what? The sum i equals 1 to n of ci vi by construction. So we assume that the dual basis is linear. So I can pull out the sum, I can pull out the constant. But remember, by definition, the upper j acting on v lower i is Kronecker delta ij, which gives us what? What's that? Ci delta ij. All right, yeah, ci delta ij. And remember, delta ij is what? Zero if i not equal to j. It's one if i is equal to j. So that takes that summation and it just squashes it down to just the jth term. J is a free but arbitrary index in this calculation. It survives. The I is a dummy index of summation. It, it goes away. So we're left with CJ, which is exactly what I claimed. Right? Notice that phi beta of X here, right, is equal to C1, C2, dot, 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 Cn, right? But that's equal to what? That's equal to like V upper 1 acting on X, V upper 2 acting on X, dot, 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 V upper N acting on X. This goes to show you the thing I claimed at the end of last class, which is that the coordinate map phi beta is really having component functions, dual basis v1, dual basis v2, dot, 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 dual basis vn. So the, the dual vectors, we could look at them simply as the component functions of the coordinate map. One thing we could do. One last exercise here. Um, now, I, I have not proved that the dual basis is, in fact, a basis, have I? What, what would you have to do? You've got to prove linear independence and spanning. But those cal calculations are actually pretty straightforward, and I think I may have left them to you as a homework problem. So uh, I'm going to examine if we have linear transformation T going from V to W, right? Um, I explained if we have basis beta here and we had basis gamma over here, we discussed that if you had t of t of x, right, and you calculate the gamma coordinate of that, we can look at t matrix t beta gamma x beta. This is a corresponding formula for the uh, involving the coordinates of the domain, the codomain, and the matrix of the abstract transformation, right? Um, Let's see here. Uh, I could also write this as the sum, uh, let's say j equals 1 to m of tx uh, gamma, the, the jth coordinate of that, right, times w sub j is equal to the sum um, I equals 1 to N, sum J equals 1 to M. And um, so this, this is getting like really old and different notation here. Let me just say that, let me just for the sake of brevity here, call this one A. All right, so that would be A. Um, I, J. And then the coordinate vector of x with respect to the beta basis, the jth component of that. Would that make sense? Here j is going from, no, I think I, uh, 
I messed up the sum here. This sum is j equals 1 to, let me put the j equals 1 to m and the i equals 1 to n. I think that makes more sense. j goes from 1 to n. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry guys. I'll fix it eventually here. Give me a second. j1 to n, i equals 1 to m. See, the, the x is from v, which is n-dimensional, right? And I'm using, by the way, the notation I introduced last time, w1, w2, da, 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 wm, a basis for the, for the, the codomain w. Um, so this, this is all times uh, w. Ah, curses. I, I, I got to fix this. Um, to make this expression like not so awkward, what should I do? I should put over here, instead of j, what should I do? I should really change the other one to also i to make it match up. If you think about it, that makes sense because i is like the, the row index, you know? And so the row index goes from 1 to the size of the output for the transformation like T of V equals to AV. If we have an M by N matrix, the output is M as in mommy dimensional. Okay, so, all right, then what? Well, this, what is this? The thing is, this is exactly V upper J acting on X. So I could rewrite this as the sum um, i equals 1 to m, the sum um, j equals 1 to n of a i j, v upper j, all of this acting on x, and there's a wi over here. So I could further tell you that W upper I of T of X is equal to a sum um, J equals 1 to N of A I J V upper J. Um, acting on X. Or more to the point, um, I mean, this is really the ith component function of T with respect to the gamma basis. Um, to complete this thought, I should really write what AIJ is in terms of the basis. Do you guys remember what that is? T beta gamma is what? We do T of V1, gamma coordinate of that, da 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 da, T of Vn, gamma coordinate of that. So if I want the, um, Ijth component of that, what is it? So what, what's the Ijth component of this? The Jth column is what? Get the jth column, I put v, t of vj, right? And then I take the what? The gamma coordinate of that, and I select the ith component of that. But we have, we've just learned 
by the proposition that we could write that as W upper I of T of V lower J like that. So in other words, I could replace this with the dual basis with respect to the, the codomain, W, acting on T of V sub J times V upper J like that. So anyway, if you're like, so what's the point? The point is that we can rewrite things in terms of the dual basis if we want. And there are certain questions where if you do this, it's actually very insightful. But I think I'm going to just cut our losses here for the moment because I don't think you guys are quite following me, and that's okay. Let us turn the page and go back to the question of coordinate change. I will fall back to my usual devices. I think I've shown you enough, though, that you can answer the questions about dual basis, which are in the homework, right? I think you've got a pretty good shot at it. No? What? Do you want me to be honest? Not really. Um, are, you, didn't, you didn't already turn them in, right? You did? The, I mean, the, 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 the dual basis are in here already? No, no, that's the, that's the next homework. So, yeah, these are fine. I mean, there's hope for these. All right. <clears throat> I may I may come back to these formulas later. So I just I'm not sure we actually have time because of my my poor planning. <sighs> <clears throat> so coordinate change. So basically here's the question. We could talk about the coordinate vector of x with respect to the basis, the beta basis versus the coordinate vector of x with respect to say a beta bar basis. How would these be related? That's coordinate change for vectors. We also have the problem of relating the matrix with respect to the gamma beta basis for a linear transformation versus the matrix with respect to, say, a different pair of bases. And I, I like to just put bars on the different ones just so that the relationship between beta and beta bar is clear. These are two different bases for V. Gamma and gamma bar, two different bases for W. Um, so here, we're looking at T a linear transformation from vector space V to vector space W. Here we're just looking at X, a vector, and a vector, you know, X, X a, vector, a vector, and V. How are these related? What are the, what are the relations between the matrix um, or the coordinate vector with respect to a different uh, choice of basis? How do you do these? And <clears throat> so let's talk about it. So as with everything else, if the vector space V and the vector space W are actually column vectors, there are the nicest formulas, all right? Really the most bigly formulas you can find in that case. They're the greatest. Let's see here. Oh. Um, <clears throat> but the picture is essentially just this. So if this is the vector space, and here's X up here, right? Then on the one hand, we have the phi beta coordinates. Down here, here's a copy of Fn, right? That gets us x beta. On the other hand, we can calculate the beta bar coordinate, the vector of x, like that, all right? And the question is, how do we get from here to here? Well, may I suggest that we just sort of use the picture and go like this. So here's the deal. Um, X beta bar should be equal to 
what is it? I take, I take the coordinate vector of x with respect to beta here, and I do what? I do d beta inverse of it, yeah? And then I do phi beta bar of that. But, I mean, I'm talking about composition here, right? Can we do better? I mean, what is phi beta bar composed with phi beta equal to? It's a composition of linear maps going from column vectors to column vectors. So in fact, you could write this as a matrix multiplication. You could rewrite this as the matrix of this map, phi beta bar, composed with phi beta inverse. That matrix times x beta. That's what coordinate change would look like you know, for, uh, for vectors. Now, my notation is that this is the so-called P beta beta bar coordinate change matrix. So in other words, to recap here, what I'm saying is that we can take x, the beta bar coordinates of x, and they're going to be equal to the coordinate change matrix p beta beta bar times the coordinate vector for x. So once we find that coordinate change matrix, then we can change the coordinates of any vector that we like. Shall I do an example? Do an example. Let's see here. How about beta equal to 1, 1, 1, minus 1? All right. And that, I mean, let me let be, that, that, that'll be beta bar. And let's let beta just be the standard basis. So do you guys remember what the rule was? Phi um, All right, so if I have a vector, um, let's say V equal to uh, XE1 plus XE2, I'm trying to relate and figure out what does it look like if I have x bar 1, 1 plus y bar 1 minus 1? You know, how, what are the relation between the standard Cartesian coordinates x, y and the non-Cartesian coordinates x bar, y bar? I mean, that, that's a legitimate question. And so the notation here, so here like, uh, <laughs> well, uh, what do we? Uh, I mean, I'm using x over here as a vector. Now over here, I'm using x as a what? Well, badly, you might say. Should that be x? <laughs> no, right. Make that a y. OK. So in this world, the coordinate vector of v with respect to the beta basis is what? It is x, y, right? What's the coordinate vector of v with respect to the beta bar basis by my by definition? X bar, y bar, right? And, and what am I saying? I'm saying that x bar, y bar is equal to the matrix of phi beta composed with phi beta inverse 
times the, you know, xy, right? The question is, what is this coordinate change matrix in this case? Woo! Yowzers. At this point, I will re recall, ask you to recall, that we have previously shown that phi beta bar of V is actually equal to the matrix with beta bar inverse times V in this context. In the context of column vectors, we proved that you could take the matrix, the basis, put it in a matrix, invert it. That gives you the formula for the coordinate map. This we have done in a previous class. So I'm going to use that here. And oh, what is phi beta, by the way? What's the, if, the, if, you have, if beta is a standard basis, what's the coordinate map of the standard basis? It's just the identity, right? So what's the inverse of the identity? The identity, right? This is just, this is just I. And why can I break it up into the product of the standard matrices? Well, because we're looking at transformations from R2 to R2, right? And so what is this? This is beta bar inverse on xy. So what is beta bar inverse? 1, 1, 1, minus 1, inverse of that. This looks like I've got 1 over minus 2. Flip the diagonals. Put minuses on the off diagonals. So that looks like an x plus y over 2 and a x minus y over 2. So there, there you go. x bar is x plus y over 2 and y bar is x minus y over 2. Beta is the uh, beta here. I said is the standard basis, so the coordinate map for the standard basis is just the identity map. So it's kind of s silly in that. Yeah, I mean, so if we're working with an abstract vector space, it gets uglier. Let me I'll project an example here in just a second. But uh, um, so we can picture what's going on here, if you like. So here's the x, here's the y, right? Where's the x bar? Where's the x bar coordinate? axis in this in this example. X bar goes in the 1, 1 direction, right? So X bar is like this. Where's Y bar? It's like this, right? And so if you pick a point somewhere, like here, right? Say X, Y. If you look here, and you look there, it's taking this many copies. That is, in fact, x plus y over 2 copies of 1, 1, that vector, plus, well, let me do it in green. I'll purple. I'll set up a purple. Plus, over here, this guy, x minus y over 2 copies of 1 minus 1 to get to that point x, y. So given a point in the plane, do we want to describe it in terms of building, getting to that point using E1 and E2? That's the Cartesian coordinate system. Or do we want to use x bar and y bar like this? I mean, this is, <clears throat> this point x, y is also equal to x bar times 1, 1 plus y bar times 1 minus 1. So these are different, different coordinate systems on R2, different ways of describing the same point using different vectors. 
and this is how they're related. X bar is x plus y over 2, y bar is x minus y over 2. Oh yeah, that's a typo. Sorry about that. I fixed the next one. I forgot to fix the previous one. It's it's coming back from this over here. Yeah. Yeah. Other questions? Here, let me <clears throat> So that that's just coordinate vector change. Of course, we also need to talk about linear transformation. And so for the linear transformation, to understand the way coordinate change works, we need to draw the pictures that we did before to understand how the matrix of the linear transformation relates. Come on. I'm getting there. So this is the picture I this is the picture I had just I have just um, drawn to relate the beta bar coordinates to the beta coordinates in terms of the coordinate change matrix. Um, the example which follows I actually work out the coordinates um, the coordinate change matrix. I work out the coordinate change matrix in an in a, an example over two by two matrices and work it out. I work out that the p beta um, P beta bar, um, rather the P beta beta bar. P, notice, the, notice the juxtaposition of the bars. You gotta be watch out for this. Beta bar beta on that, but down here, beta beta bar. <coughs> the order matters. So this is constructing the columns of P beta beta bar. <coughs> First, second, third column. Here it is. And with that, I can change coordinates on. Um, the traceless two by two matrices, which is a three dimensional subspace of R two by two. In particular, if I have this matrix one two three minus one, so it's got trace zero, right? And the coordinates, I say the coordinates with respect to the beta basis are two three one. So that means that I'm using um, E one two, E two one, and then E one one minus um, E two two as the beta basis, right? And so that's why that coordinate vector is. But then if I multiply this by the, you know, coordinate change matrix, which I calculated here. See, this one I could not do just the thing we did on, that I covered up, right? There's no, you can't just put the column vectors in a matrix and, and calculate the coordinate change matrix. In this case, we have to work it out from base principles, and I did. And so that times the two, three, one gives me five halves minus one halves one which is to say that this matrix can be written as five halves of the first thing in the beta bar basis minus one half of the second thing in the beta bar basis plus one copy of the third thing in the beta bar basis. Where, of course, the beta bar basis was what? It was given up here. So beta, the beta bar basis is E11 plus E21, E12 minus E2, E1, E21, and E11 minus E22. So the third the third thing in the beta bar basis is the same as the first thing, as the third thing in the original basis, but the first two, the first two elements have been kind of inter, 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 intertwangled. Use a technical term. Anyway, I'm just pointing out there is an explicit gory detail over not column vectors right here to look at. Column vectors are nicer because you can compare a given column vector as being built from the beta basis versus being built from the beta bar basis. And this shows that the relation, generally speaking, is given by the product of 
the basis matrices as follows. So we had one of these being the identity matrix for the example I had on the board behind here, which made it a little bit easier still. But generally speaking, this is how we can go from one, um, one basis to another in the case of column vectors. And here's an explicit example doing that. I'm going to go ahead here. We get, we, our example I just did on the board is very similar to this, so I'm going to move on here. So, <clears throat> I defined the matrix of T with respect to a beta gamma basis before. This is how to relate that to the, the matrix with respect to the beta bar gamma bar matrices with respect to a different choice of bases. We have to multiply by the P gamma gamma bar matrix here and the P um, beta bar beta, I think inverse, I, I can't remember my notation, oh beta, beta beta bar inverse matrix there. So you end up picking up the inverse one on the one side but the, the forward one on the other side. It's just a quirk of the details of how this works out, that can be derived from this picture. So, you know, to compare multiplication by the bar basis to multiplication by the unbarred matrix, we just connect using these connecting maps here, and that's what the form, where the formula comes from. So, <clears throat> here. So here's an example. I have a linear transformation from quadratic polynomials to the complex numbers, right? And the formula is given by what I do. What is this formula? What is this? It's basically I'm evaluating at i, right? So like ai squared plus bi plus c, so that's c minus a plus ib, all right? And so I calculate the matrix for this given transformation with respect to the beta gamma basis where I pick beta and gamma just for the purpose of illustration to be x squared x and 1 and 1 and i over here. So we work through that and it gives us this matrix minus 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0 like we talked about last time. Now then to contrast this, I look at the basis beta bar which is x minus 2 squared, x minus 2 and 1. And just to be um, annoying, I juxtaposed the i and the 1 over here, right? So these, both the gamma bar and the beta bar basis are really different. And then what I did was a trick. I, instead of just um, going, you know, going straight forward, I, I, I looked at my polynomial um, ax squared plus bx plus c, and I rewrote it using Taylor's theorem as 4a plus 2b plus c plus 4a times 4a plus b times x minus 2 plus a times x minus 2 squared. So you guys have had calculus too, so this should not be mysterious to you, right? We can take a given polynomial and recenter it using Taylor's theorem. The reason that's interesting is because it then reveals the coordinate change map because it says that the f of x with coordinates a, b, c with respect to the um, the beta basis has coordinates 4a plus 2b plus c comma 4a plus b comma a with respect to the oh, other way around this comma that comma that with respect to the beta bar basis. So Taylor's theorem properly interpreted tells me the coordinate change matrix in this case. There's the formula for coordinate change right there. Anyway, this is the the, what is this? This is the P beta beta bar map. P beta, P beta beta bar. The coordinate change matrix. <clears throat> and then I, I worked it out in the other direction to invert the matrix. If we, instead of doing this then that, we do that then this. In other words, the role of beta and beta bar, uh, I juxtapose, this should be the inverse matrix of that. And you can try multiplying that times that, you'll get the identity. Um, so to, to find the inverse matrix, I just took a, a polynomial which was centered at 2, and I, re, I just multiplied it out to find the corresponding polynomial 
in the usual monomial basis. But anyway, we get to the point here. The gamma to gamma bar coordinate change matrix is easier because we just flipped the, we flipped I and one. So that's just a permutation matrix is the change of basis matrix in that case. Um, it's just this is the change of basis for the, for the codomain. Then going back to the formula which was derived from the picture, this is how I would calculate the matrix for T with respect to the beta bar gamma bar matrix. I, I take the change of basis matrix for the, for the range times the matrix with respect to the given basis here times the basis, you know, times this matrix here which we worked out and that is the matrix with respect to the, the changed coordinates for T. Now after doing all that, of course I want to check my calculation. So um, I tried it out. If you calculate the formula for T in terms of the, um, you know, the, the beta bar basis, which is essentially looking, you know, we have coordinates A, B, C here, I get the following, 3A minus 2B plus C times I times 4, minus 4A plus B, which means if you look at this, you can see that the matrix with respect to the barred system is this, which is exactly what I calculated by doing the P matrix, P inverse formula, all right? So, yeah, I mean, these calculations are pretty involved, right? I mean, any one of these things takes a couple minutes to work out, right? To put them all together. Now, the good news is, for column vectors, this gets much easier. See, because if we're looking at a linear transformation on column vectors, then we don't have to work out the, the, the change of basis matrices in the abstract. You can obtain them just by multiplying the basis times the inverse to the, you know, the beta bar inverse matrix. So like this is P gamma gamma, rather, rather P gamma gamma bar. You just get from gamma bar inverse times gamma. And over here, we have P beta beta bar inverse, I believe, right? Um, now, if one of, if the, if you want to relate the standard matrix, though, to the non-standard matrix, it's even simpler still because in, this, in that case, the, the, um, the unbarred basis is just the identity. So these formula, like the identity matrices, just gone, and you're just left with gamma bar inverse T beta bar. Where we most often use this formula later in the course, we're actually looking at a linear transformation T going from, say, Rn by n, to Rn by n, all right? And in that special case, the formula is most simple and beautiful. So if we, if we want to contrast um, the matrix of T with respect to the beta basis, we'll say beta bar basis, you just do what? You do beta bar inverse, the standard matrix of T, beta bar, and that gets you the formula or as it's sometimes denoted, um, T beta bar beta is just equal to P inverse standard matrix of TP. This is what we often need going forward in this course because we're looking at a vector space, a tra linear transformation from a vector space to itself. And in that case, that's what this proposition 7.67 looks like. Here's an example of that right here. If I have this linear transformation T, that's kind of an ugly formula, isn't it? I mean, there's lots of non-zero stuff in there, right? 2 minus 2, 2, 1, 0 minus 1, 2 minus 3, 2. Everybody can calculate the standard matrix for this at this point, right? Like, that's like not a big deal, right? So the question that we're confronting now is, what does the matrix of this given transformation look like with respect to a non-standard basis? The answer is simply, you use this, all right? And so this non-standard basis I introduce is beta bar 101, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 4, 3, 1. Now you might wonder why. That's, that's, that I have an answer. I'm just pulling that from like a, you know, rabbit out of a hat or whatever. But if you do that, and you look at this P beta bar inverse T beta. Now, of course, you've got to calculate the inverse of a three by three. Unpleasant, 
but you can do it, right? Um, standard matrix, you, can, you got it, you know it, you love it. Beta, matrix multiplication, can do, right? Not a big deal. Look what happens. With respect to the non-standard basis, the formula for T goes from looking somewhat complicated to looking absolutely beautiful. This says that T of X bar, Y bar, Z bar is just 4X bar minus Y bar, Z bar. So it, it, it somehow reveals the true nature of the map. That's the whole reason we're doing this. We're, we're trying to think about how can we change coordinates to make formulas nicer. I mean, that's why we're interested in this, is sometimes changing formulas will reveal that, in fact, there's a beautiful, simpler version of the, of the map just hiding under the surface, and the way we're looking at it is wrong. The thing that I had under the board here, I said, get out of there. This here, if you looked at x bar squared plus y bar squared equals to 1, what would you tell me that is? You'd probably be tempted to tell me it's a circle. That's actually not true. But um, <laughs> that's because these are not nice coordinates. But um, that's a relatively simple thing to graph in terms of x bar, y bar, right? What that looks like in terms of x, y coordinates, it's quite awful. So in the x bar, y bar, it's something like, I don't know. It's, but it's not, it's not really a circle. It's more like an ellipse. And so this is actually, if you sort back to the x, y coordinates, it's a rotated ellipse. So by changing coordinates, we could take like a rotated ellipse and change it to a non-rotated ellipse, that sort of thing. That's where we're going with some of these ideas. Oh, I, I shut up. So sorry. You can't